Peace, it's Terrell the Lion Martial Arts Academy. Today we're going to be going over one of my personal favorite things, Fox Out. One of the reasons why it's one of my favorites is because I also um, did Shotokan, Karate, and Taekwondo. And so if you know anything about that, um, and Wing Chun, Fox Out is very similar to um, the knife hand, the hour knife hand that's used in those styles. And then obviously the famous Karate Chop that everybody knows about. Even the judo chop. Judo chop. Even though that's technically not a thing because it's throws, but people say it, so it is what it is. There's two different fox owls that we have in Wing Chun. There is a regular fox owl that just chops out, and then there is a rising fox owl that also chops upward. And the rising fox owl is more so used to uplift your opponent, um, break their balance, and make them more susceptible to another attack that you're able to do. If you want to see an application of rising fox owl, go ahead and tell me in the comment section, and I'll make a video for that. Real quick, quick plug. Go ahead and follow us on our Instagram. Every video isn't as well put together as this, but that is where we do our Wing Chun Minute and we begin to go over these techniques. And here is where we do the deeper dive breakdowns. But, you know, we have self-defense things here and there, things that you can follow along so that even if you don't practice Wing Chun or you know a little bit of Wing Chun or you do practice Wing Chun, um, we have some drills that you can work on there on our Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, Fox Owl is... The first movement that we learned in Wing Chun that actually uh, does not protect our center line. When we first learned it in Selim Tao, we start in a long style position, and then we open up, swing our arms out, or open our arms out, double fox out, and then bring them back. Um, whenever we do them in class, or say in Chum Q, when we learn it in the Chum Q form, you do fox out, and then you go to jump style. It shows that Wing Chun recognizes that not all attacks have to be center line. But if you ever get into a situation where you have to break that center line theory, make sure that you recover the center line as quickly as possible. That's why you fox out and then go into the next move, which is called jump out and protecting your center line. So there are traditionalists in Wing Chun who believe that center line theory is the end all be all and everything that you do has to be on that center line and you can't do any strikes that come off the center line otherwise it's not Wing Chun and basically you're like disgracing the ancestors of Wing Chun and all of the things and you're actually spitting in the face of any Moe or the nun herself who helped create Wing Chun but it's not it's not that serious because if it was that serious, then it would not be in our Sigma Tau, which is the first form that everybody learns in Wing Chun, where the first thing, the first way that we learn Fox Out is to open up and expose our center line and then come back and close our center line. So in Wing Chun, yes, center line is, center line is very important. You want to protect it because that holds all of your vital organs. So you probably want to protect that of which that's vital. But if you have to deviate and move off of the center line, just make sure that you recover and protect the center line as quick as possible after that strike is made or after that block is made. All right, so don't stay out there and stay away from the center line. You don't want to, you don't want to leave yourself open. Just like if you're in a fight and your hands are down, somebody's punching you in the face. You're the oh, oh, you did it again! You oh, stupid, stupid, piss! You don't want to continue to have your hands down. You might want to either bring your hands up or oh, oh, he got off the camera. Dodge. Don't sit there and continuously get punched in the face. Fox Owl is also one of those like oh crap type movements. You know, especially rising Fox Owl. It's one of those oh crap type movements. It's like you don't know what's coming, so you kind of throw it up. Um, so what we do when we turn on uh, Fox Owl is like what we use whenever we turn to face somebody. We don't just turn to face somebody and leave all of this exposed so that we can get hit. If there's somebody over there, we're gonna turn box out first and then go into mom style. So we don't just turn like, hey, hit me in the chin. Say you get into a street fight, you know, somebody's um, real close to you, they happen to just throw a punch, be like, oh crap, bam, rising fox out right there. The aim with fox out is a little bit different than with regular knife hands. Um, fox out 
when you aim with that knuckle that's in your uh, wrist, you probably didn't even know that there's a knuckle in your wrist, but there is. It's called the pisiform bone. And so that knuckle or that bone is used for the stabilization of the entire hand. And in Wing Chun, we're all about structure and being stable. And um, whenever we deliver a hit or a strike, we deliver it in a way where we're not off balance, but we can take the opponent off balance. So it only makes sense that we would use a bone that's for the stabilization of the entire hand in order for the stabilization of the strike so that when we strike, it doesn't take us off balance, but it can take our opponent off balance and it can deliver some very serious damage to them. With our flock out, we don't bring our arm all the way out. We want to make sure that our shoulder continues to sit in that joint, but we don't want our arm to go back past our shoulder. You want to hit wrist first, pisiform bone first. So that makes it so that if you miss with the pisiform bone, guess what? You're gonna hit with the blade of your hand. That gives you more surface area to be able to attack and actually strike your opponent. But if you're aiming with the wrist, that means that you have to get a little bit closer, correct? In order to get in and get that strike. So if you're getting a little bit closer and then they try to move out of range, you might not get them with the wrist, but you will get them with the hand. And that hurts just as well if you've done any type of Taekwondo or Karate. Work on doing Fox style moving forward in Shang Ma. And this is where we do fox out straight to the throat. And then you can step off, corner step, and fox out. And that's how you also get to the throat. So we fox out and move that person's guard, fox out to lox out, and grab. And then we can either pull them into our punch or pull them out of the way so that we can either punch to the head or punch to their body. To build up fox out, you have a rice bag and you just continuously hit the rice bag. In a sense, your fingers bent upward so that you can hit with the pistol form bone. It's a great tool, something you really want in your arsenal. Obviously, it stands the test of time because it's in karate and it's in taekwondo, so it's not anything new. The only thing new is our application of it and just not being fully committed in the striking point where in which we hit with our fox style. So if you like the content, go ahead, chain punch that like button, make it man proud. So it doesn't cost you anything unless you hit that subscription button so hard because you're so excited about the content that you break your finger. In that case, I'm sorry. Please don't do that. Um, do not send us the bill because we don't have insurance for you and we won't pay your medical. So lightly hit that subscription button, but chain punch that like button. All right, thank you.